Hello there. The first part of this video, I was in the woodland earlier in the week um, testing the new Richard Outdoors fire trough. Unfortunately, it got quite dark and cold and wet, so I wasn't able to finish off the reviews as I wanted to in the woodland. So I thought I'd take this um, opportunity just in my workshop just to talk through what I thought of it, how it goes together, um, and whether you know I recommend it or not. So I'm just going to run through some of my thoughts and um, let you know what I think. So it arrives in a canvas bag or pouch. It's very well made, quite thick canvas. It's got the made in the UK badge because this whole product is made by Richard Outdoors in the UK. It's got his badge, leather badge stitched onto the outside. Very well constructed, very thick Velcro, very firm closure. It's a fairly long stove designed to take two pots rather than sort of the more common kindling stoves like the firebox or the honey stove, which usually just take one pot. This one's designed to take two, so it is slightly longer, but it still packs really flat. So in the pouch, in the one pocket, you see the longer pieces, which are the two sides, the base, the cooking plate, and a spirit burner plate, which you can add in. And then the legs or the, or the ends come in a smaller pouch on the other side. So I'll just show you how they all fit together. So that's the basic structure, two ends, two sides, and at the moment, no base. Quite quick to put together. This is the base plate where you actually will make the fire on and put the kindling. That just clips into a series of holes. It goes into the bottom set of holes, like so. There are a number of holes up the sides which give you options. I think those are really designed for using with tent pegs so you can lower the pots inside because the plates that come with the stove really only fit in um, the holes, one set of holes. They can't drop in and out. So the final one, if you're just making a normal fire, is the two burner plate. And that clips in the top and it goes in the top set of holes like so. So essentially, because of the trough shape, you've got two points where you can put pots on. Now, I would stress they really aren't going to take very big pots, more sort of your billy and your small teapot. But you can then straddle across the top if you need to. Now, this plate that is an option that comes with it but you don't actually use it unless you are, you're going to use a spirit burner style. You need to take out the that burner plate and then you replace it with that spirit burner holder. And that goes into three notches down and can only really fit there, it can't fit anywhere else. One issue I have found though, um, so this is the plate for the spirit burner. Um, it's a fairly standard spirit burner. Now I don't know, mine is not a Trangia version. It's um, one from the Bushcraft store, so just a no-name brand one. But it doesn't fit perfectly in there. It can actually slot through the hole, it actually drops through the hole, which really I think is designed to rest this one almost just fits. So that's how it's designed to sit in the trough, but it actually can fall through. So I'm not sure if that's just mean that whether this is just slightly smaller than the standard one or these holes were cut slightly too big. It's only a couple of mil out, but uh, it does make it not work as it should for that particular purpose. 
but overall i think it's a pretty um good kindling stove you can feed in the kindling from both ends so you're not restricted um obviously the longer shape of this means you can get a pot and a, a billy or a kettle on at the same time um burned very well there was a slight bit of warping to this plate that's easily straightened out afterwards but that's probably fairly common with a lot of these it's fairly thick gauge so it's not the lightest in the pouch it weighs in at 985 so it's just under a kilogram in weight um so it's not for super lightweight hiking but it is quite a robust structure um and works very well i think the canvas bag is also very strong well made overall i think it's a very good product um, and i think i would recommend it it's a shame about the spirit burner plate um i'll probably need to just think of a way to solve that one um maybe trial it with a trangia burner just to make sure that's not the issue but um outside of that yeah very well made the other item that i was trialing and was in the video was this collapsible buck saw um, got this from the military sur surplus it is a new item it wasn't very expensive um and it actually is smaller than some of the collapsible buck saws that people make out of wood and obviously not as tactile but it's made out of aluminium it's coated it's not going to rust um came with two blades they pack up very small very light um and it worked really well i was sawing dry wood for the kindling stove and um worked really well and easily fitted in my backpack um wasn't very long I haven't weighed it but it's it's not a not a heavy item it'll definitely be lighter than a wooden buck saw um and also it's very slim low profile easy slip down inside your bag which is where i had it um so yeah i think that's that was a, a good trial definitely recommend this um i have seen other people using them so they they're probably fairly common out there but um it's definitely a nice option to have a longer saw for cutting dry wood it's got a obviously a, a blade um that's designed for dry hardwood um things like your baco laplander um typically for cutting green wood um because this one has actually got a, a hardwood blade so yeah good recommendation i think so that's it for this week um hope you found it useful and if you enjoy what you see then consider subscribing thanks very much